On August 14, one of the main stars of Bellator, Gegard Mousasi, confidently defended his belt and apparently does not intend to concede it to anyone in the near future. At various times, Gegard became a champion in almost every major promotion in which he performed, such as Dream, Strike Force, Cage Warriors and Bellator. He also fought in the Pride Grand Prix and was one step away from the title in UFC, but suddenly, being in the top 5, moved to Bellator as Scott Cocker offered him a fatter contract. And today, we will remember the best fights of the Dreamcatcher again and all his champion exploits who can definitely be considered one of the strongest middleweights of our time. Before moving to Pride, Masasi travelled the world and fought in various well-known and not-so-famous leagues and also jumped in weight, performing in the middle and light heavyweights. In June 2006, he took part in the welterweight Grand Prix at the Bushido 11 tournament. At the first stage, he came across the Olympic judo champion, Japanese Makoto Takimoto, who very smoothly broke into MMA and had the statistics of 2-2 with all decisions. Special cornucopia? Takimoto immediately takes Gegard down and goes to the armbar, which it would seem should have been a sentence for a dream catcher, but Masasi managed to get out of this bad position and to take the back of Jidoka, and then from the back mount really hit his head. On the sixth minute, the referee raised the fighters to their feet, but by that time Masasi had done a good job on the selling face of the Japanese, which was seriously disturbed. Doctors examined the judoka and decided that it wasn't worth continuing with such an eye injury. The fight was stopped and Gegard passed to the second stage of the Grand Prix tournament and the beating of judokas of different levels and caliber became a real Musashi's obsession in the future. Two months later, the second stage took place at the Bushido 12 tournament at which Akihiro Gono, well-known Japanese guy, who had fought with everyone and got into all kinds of troubles during his career, came to Gegard. Masashi, with the first strike, decided to take the Japanese head off, but he didn't feel this high kick, responded with a slap on a jump, and then the fight moved to the ground, where the Japanese dominated and most of the time was in a top position. Gono, being behind Masashi's back, came out beautifully to the armbar, and this time didn't leave Gegard any chance. Masasi tapped and lost the fights leaving the tournament, and this defeat was the second in his career, and the most interesting that the first was also an armbar. After this failure with Gono, Gegard fought with Cuban judoka with real heavy fists Hector Lombard at the Bushido 13 tournament and won this fight by decision. Thus he became the first reserve of the Grand Prix in case of injury of the fighters, from which he flew out thanks to Gono, but by the will of fate, this was the last fight of Musashi in Pride, and he didn't perform under this brand anymore. Well, about Lombard, would you be interested in a review of this Cuban smasher? If so, give me feedback in the comments. My name is Gerard Musashi, I'm from Holland. I train with Team Sainbus, and my record is 17 wins, 2 losses, 1 draw. After finishing with Pride, Masasi received an invitation from the Cage Warriors and a chance to play the vacant middleweight belt. His rival was another fighter who had just left Pride, Frenchman Gregory Buchelagam, who had 5-3 record. The fight began with very tight hugs and a clinch, and a transfer to the ground from Gregory, who was in the side control, but he played his advantage not very competently, for which he had to pay with his own health. The Frenchman tried to finish Musashi with hill hook, but failed a little and lost his position fell under a fully loaded train. Musashi didn't give him a chance of survival and hammered the Frenchman's head into the canvas, thereby becoming the Cage Warriors middleweight champion, and it took him a little more than two minutes. After winning the championship, Musashi took his adventure. He even fought twice in hardcore. First, he brutally finished off Damir Mirinic with his elbows and then had a fight with the glamorous cyborg Evangelista Santos, who after being crucified took a couple of dozen punches to the head. The referee was nervous about cyborg's health and stopped the fight, which upset Santos very much, who during this time didn't even fulfill his minimum standard for missed punches. Evangelista was a chopper to the bones, and it was considered bad manners for him to end the battle with a healthy face, and as a sign of protest in his unbendable principles, he even decided to break the sign of himself. 
But talking seriously, Masson says quite confident and undisputable victory and the work of the referee, although maybe someone doesn't agree. After hardcore, Musashi nailed Steve Mensin at the M1 tournament in Netherlands and stayed for a year in Dream, where he became a participant in the Middleweights Grand Prix tournament. More precisely, he was included in the extended list of 32 fighters, of which 16 were supposed to remain. His rival at this stage was the veteran Dennis Kang, who like Musashi was fighting everywhere in his career, and by the way, he was a finalist of the very same prize Grand Prix, which Gegard failed. For Musashi and Kang. From the first seconds, Kang threw hooks at Gegard and carried out the takedown. He took the side control and was preparing Musashi for Kimura, who interfered him as best as he could and threw his knees into his head while lying on his back. During his attacks on his back, Musashi managed to throw a triangle around Kang's neck and make him tap. It was a beautiful finish with a submission from Gegard. He will go to the Dream Grand Prix, where at the first stage he comes across another judoka, Dong Sik Yun, whom Masasi confidently outplays and takes the fight by the judge's decision. <laughs> On September 23rd, 2008, the semi finals and Grand Prix final took place in one evening. Everything is exactly according to Prize Proven Scheme. Gegard Musashi and Melvin Manhoof came out for the place of the first finalists. It was safe to bet everything because this fight wouldn't reach a decision since they both finished almost all their fights ahead of schedule. This is how experts from Dream evaluated their skills and chances. You look at the explosive Manhoof and the Gegard checked the distance with a jab and then although not immediately, he managed to teleport Melvin to the ground where he had a solid advantage, but Melvin almost immediately moves into a mount position and after the triangle raises Gegard over the cuckoo's nest. In this episode there was supposed to be a knockout lair in the style of Rampage, but Manhoof is not Quentin Jackson, instead of a brutal finish he throws Masasi rather carefully and then taps as a sign of surrender. So Gegard took the fight with a submission and stopped the dangerous knockouter in a minute and a half, thereby becoming one of the finalists of the Grand Prix. The major thing here. His rival in the final was Jacques Ray Souza, who was going on a series of 10 victories in a row and was mighty crocodiling in Japan. You can nap, little massage, 10. And here they go. Very long scouting and Shakari's jump at Musashi's feet, but Souza didn't succeed in taking down Gegard the first time, but the second attempt was quite successful. Jacques Ray, who could torture anyone down there, worked leisurely from above and tried to pass the defense, but then something went wrong. While Alligator tried to fly into the guard with a blow, Musashi took him out with an upkick. And looking at Musashi, it seemed that he isn't very happy with the victory this way. Although he may be happy, but it was always very difficult to read any emotions on his face. He's too calm and reserved. But anyway, for Musashi, it was already the second trophy in his career, and after the champion's belt in the Cage Warriors, he became the Dream Grand Prix middleweight champion. Giga decided not to stop there and signed up for the next Dream Grand Prix, now in the open weight. The tournament was called Super Hulk and brought together a real team of superheroes. Bob Sapp, 3 meter Korean, Cameroonian judoka, giant killer, professional baseball player, kickboxer, K1 champion Mark Hunt and Musashi, who on the first had to fight versus each other and identify the main favorite and the possible champion, since all the others were very much inferior in skill to this couple. Despite the criticism on the composition of the participants, the Grand Prix sold very well, and the final of this Super Freak tournament attracted more than 45,000 spectators, which is an absolute record for the organization. But back to Musashi and Hunt battle. See the old school pride style atomic backdrop. Here we go, first round of action. The beginning of the round, and Gegard drops Mark on the canvas and then takes side control, where he slowly punches Samoan and prepares a submission. In the second minute, Masashi holds a straight armbar and forces Mark to tap. A very quick finish in this loud confrontation, while for Hunt, this defeat was number five in a row, and four of them were submissions. So Hunt flies away in the first stage, but Masashi was also unable to continue the tournament, as he was injured and was replaced by Bob Sapp, who lost his fight. 
<laughs> After this tournament, Gegard went to Strike Force, and this will be the next chapter of our review, but then he rushed to Dream again to take part in the Four Fighters Grand Prix and become the light heavyweight champion. Another judoka Tatsuo Mizuno suffered in the final, being choked by Gegard in the seventh minute of the round. After that, there was one defense of the belt in light heavyweight, which Masashi ended up with a brutal beating of Hiroshi Izumi, and this was the end of his Japanese adventure. He left the land of samurais and the status of dreams double champion. Indeed, faced the toughest challenge of his career in Henato Babalu Sobral. Arriving to America, Musashi immediately got a chance to compete for the Strike Force belt in the light heavyweight division, which was owned by Renato Sobral. An experienced Brazilian fighter went on a series of five victories and at one time claimed the UFC champion belt, but lost the fight to Chuck Liddell. You ready? You ready? Let's get it on! Masashi entered the battle relaxed and calm, as if he already knew the outcome of this interesting confrontation. He strikes the middle kick, and after catching the leg, a clinch is tied, after which the fight goes to the ground. Gegard didn't give chances to Sobral to show his grappling skills, which were at a very high level. He just beat him with punches into the canvas, and in one minute overthrew the champion from his throne. This is such a dominant and bright victory for Masashi, 26 in a row with only 2 defeats with Umbar, and at that time he was only 24 years old. Masashi's next rival in Strike Force was the African assassin Remy Thierry Sokuju, a fighter from Cameroon who represented Judo, and as we already remember, Gegard usually didn't leave a chance to guys from this discipline. Are you ready? Let's go! Here we go. Everything could have been finished at the end of the first round. Masashi threw hooks at Sokuju, but then the assassin took Gegard to the canvas and called him down, and then tried to finish the opponent with a guillotine. He apparently wasn't aware that Masashi could only be stopped by an armbar. The rest of the subs didn't work against him. Well, according to the classics, the most dangerous upkicks from Gegard have very nicely transferred Sokuju to canvas at the end of the round. Round three. In this fight, everything was done in the second round. It isn't really clear who took home to the ground in this episode, but Sokuju ended up in a top position, which he lost very soon. And then a long and a very powerful series of GNPs from Masashi followed, which ended this fight. Going on a series of 15 victories in a row, Gegard went to his first belt defense against undefeated for that time King Mola Ba, who that evening arranged the general cleaning of the octagon with Masashi's back. For 5 rounds, he was throwing and controlling Gegard on the ground, although Musashi overshot him solidly with the punches, but the forbidden strike, for which the point was removed, as well as a bunch of takedowns and control in this fight, outweighed, and King Moore became the champion, so Gegard suffered his third loss in his career and lost for the first time in America. After Strike Force, there were four years of performing in UFC, where Masashi three times took a bonus for the performance of the evening and won nine fights out of twelve. But in 2017, he parted ways with UFC and went to Bellator, where he still performs today. The first fight in the new league Gegard fought with Alexander Slimenko, and the fight, which was supposed to be like a warm up, turned out to be one of the most difficult in his career. Masashi won that fight by a very controversial decision, although many believe that Slamenko was better and should have taken the victory, or at least not lost. But it happened the way it happened, and what do you think about this result? Masashi won, or simply for Bellator, his defeat in the first battle would be very unprofitable. After such an extreme warm-up, Gegard went to the title fight against Rafael Carvalho, who went on a series of 15 victories, and for him it was the false defense of the belt. But instead of defending this belt, the Brazilian not only gave it away, but after this defeat his career went downhill. He lost the champion's belt, and out of the next 5 battles, Carvalho won only once. While Masasi has lost only one fight since that to Rafael Lovato Jr. by majority decision. And after a while, he returned the lost belt after the Brazilian stopped his career, and for the vacant title, Musashi fought with Douglas Lima and won by decision. According to the latest information, Gegard's next opponent will be Austin Wonderford, or Mr. Van Zandt, who is currently undefeated and has 10 to nil. What do you think about this fight? Does Mr. Van Zandt have a chance against Musashi, or his zero will end soon? Write in the comments.
If you like my review and want to help me to promote this video, like, post comments and send a video to your friends. All these actions help me and give me motivation. And also, who is not subscribed, subscribe and click on the bell to stay in touch and not to miss fresh videos.